Grant, that's your cue. Grant, you're from the state, sorry. Let me come out on behalf of Theodore Edgecombe. Be happy tomorrow on behalf of Theodore Edgecombe. All right, we need to put a couple things on the record. Uh, it's 1.30, the jury's back. I had a conversation with the lawyers before we called this on a couple of things. Um, first of all, unfortunately, I'm not gonna put too much detail on the record, but I discussed it with the lawyers. Uh, one of the jurors was notified over the lunch hour that she had a death in her immediate family. Um, she's basically explained it to my bailiff and asked to be excused. Uh, I told both lawyers about both sides about that situation. Uh, obviously, we have 14 jurors. If she's excused, we still have 13, which is one more than we'll ultimately need. Um, I think the lawyers are stipulating to her being excused, correct? Yes. Was that a yes from both sides? Yes. And just for the record, it's juror 18. So juror 18 will be excused. Uh, in a minute, I'll have my bailiff bring in the remaining 13. Uh, there was an issue about a, a potential defense witness. Um, the state has some additional witnesses this afternoon. Uh, the witness that was on the stand before lunch can take the stand again in a minute. Um, but there was an issue about potentially calling a witness out of order this afternoon. Is that correct? And who, it was a defense witness, and who is it again, counsel? Mark Robinson. And the state stipulating to that witness being called out of order? My understanding is he's only available today, so I will try to make room for him. Fine, I'm not opposed to that. We'll try to squeeze it in this afternoon. Um, the state, or strike that, the defense also made a request about their paralegal. Uh, I'm thinking about that. We can take that up later, gentlemen. Anything else from either side before I bring the panel in? No. No. All right. Can we have the witness on the stand again, please? Jerry's coming in. You can remain seated, please. Uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As you'll notice, because you're all smart and you've been paying attention, there's 13 of you now rather than 14. Um, without getting into any details, uh, the juror that was excused had a legitimate family emergency, uh, so I've excused her. Uh, that means a couple things. I certainly need all 13 of you to hang in there, be back on Monday, continue, and the efforts you've been making so far to come to court, be on time, obviously listen to the evidence 
As I've said from the start of the trial, I expect the trial to go to Monday. Uh, I would now modify that to Monday and or Tuesday. Uh, that may be the bad news. The good news is when I underestimate the length of a trial, I, I feel compelled to bring in snacks or treats for the jury. So Monday, you'll get bagels. If we're still here on Tuesday, you might get uh, catered uh, buffet from Bartolotta's. So do the best we can. Uh, the witness, ma'am, you remain under oath. You understand that? This is clear, man. You understand you were sworn to tell the truth? I do. All right. You can I take do. your mask down and the defense can continue. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mr. Clement. Good afternoon. All right, so I just got a, a few more areas we just want to touch in, and uh, we'll be wrapping up here soon. Uh, first thing I want to kind of go into, um, I want to now show what has been marked as State Exhibit Number 26. Yes, can you, can you, yes. So I'm showing the witness uh, what has been marked as State Exhibit Number 26. Now, Ms. Clement, you recognize that vehicle, correct? Yes. All right, and that's the vehicle that you were operating on September 22nd of 2020, correct? Yes. All right. Now, I want to bring your attention to the rear door. And there's <clears throat> what's known as an op open intoxicant in that rear door, correct? It's a can. A white claw, correct? I don't know if it's a white claw or not. Okay. Now we zoom in a little bit. Can you identify that can as a can of white claw now? Yes, that's All a right. can of white claw. You understand white claw as to be an alcoholic beverage, correct? It's a seltzer uh, beverage, yes. But it would be an alcoholic beverage, right? Yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> were you uh, given any type of citation or anything for having that open intoxicant? Yeah, yeah, really. I don't think it's particularly relevant, but you can answer, ma'am. Were you given a citation for having an open intoxicant in your vehicle in that day? No, I was not. Okay. All right, I want to now go into uh, what has been marked as State 34. Uh, Mark the state 34. Ms. Clearman, on direct examination, you explained that uh, Mr. Clearman just got out the vehicle because he just wanted to talk to Mr. Edgecombe, correct? Can you turn the mic? Sure, sorry about that. Can you repeat Could that? You okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. On direct examination, you testified that Mr. Clearman got out the vehicle simply because he wanted to talk to Mr. Edgecombe, correct? Yes, he wanted to find out why he was punched. Okay, and that's what you also indicated in those media interviews that you took immediately after this incident, correct? 
the interviews with with the news with the interviews. News. Yes. Okay. And in those interviews, you never indicated that Mr. Clearman chased Mr. Edgecombe, correct? I did not see him chase him. You said you did not see him? I did not see him chase him. Okay. I saw him walking up to him. Okay. Fair enough. All right. I want to now uh, go to what has been marked as State 34. All right, you can go ahead. All right, I want to stop right there, please. Now, this is um, the bicyclist that you identified previously today, correct? Yes. All right, we can continue. And if we can stop right a little bit further, right here. Now, Ms. Clearman, is this your vehicle here? Yes. All right, and you mm -hmm. appear to be in the uh, left lane here, correct? Yes. All right. Now, is this the point where your husband told you to follow or make a right turn to proceed after Mr. Edgecombe? No. Okay. Um, when did Mr. Clearman make that request? I believe I was in the in the in the walk lane for the pedestrians. Okay, so Mr. Clearman didn't uh, ask you to make a right turn at this point? I had started driving. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not sure if that was at that point or not. Okay, and just to be clear, to make it home, you would need to proceed straight, correct? Yes. And that option was available to you at that time, correct? available at that time where I'm at this position. At this position, you could have proceeded straight, right? I could have, yes. And Mr. Edgecombe, at this point, is right here, correct? On yes. A, in the bike lane, correct? Yes. All right, and you would agree that Mr. Edgecombe is not a threat to you at this point, correct? Yes. And you could have also made a left turn at this point, correct? Yes. You could have also made a right turn, but make that right turn into one of the two lanes that's available to you. Most likely, you probably would want to make it into the closest lane, which would be the right lane, right? <laughs> let me let me let me stop. So we, you could have made a right turn and just proceeded straight, correct? Yes. Now it might be illegal, but you also had a, a alternative to take a U turn if you wanted to, right? No. Okay. Well. Despite the options that you had available with home being straight, you decided at this point to make a right turn, correct? Yes. And that right turn, was that based off of the fact that Mr. Edgecombe was going right? It was based on the fact that my husband asked me to turn right. Okay, so he asked you to turn right at this point, correct? Yes. All right, uh, we can continue to play the video at this point. And if we can stop right here. Now, now Ms. Ms. Clearman, you're clearly positioned at this point in the right lane, correct? Yes. You're legally entitled to be in this lane that you're in right now, correct? Yes. Okay. You can see your plan, please. All right, I want to stop right there. Now, you just moved in into the bike lane, correct? It looks like that's the end of the bike lane. Okay, but Mr. Edge comes in a bike lane prior to you moving in that direction, correct? Can you rewind it? Yes, and we could bring it back five seconds. Okay, we can play it from you. All right, you stop right there, please. Now, your brake lights also turned on at this point, right? Oh, I'm sorry, your your brake lights. You you start hitting your brakes at that point that you entered into the brake, the bike lane. Correct. When I saw him, I braked, and he was already on the sidewalk. You would agree that you almost hit Mr. Um, Edgecombe, correct? I did not almost hit him. I stopped far, far back from him. Okay, 
If we could go back just five more seconds, please. He's on the sidewalk before. Okay, stop it right there, please, Council. Now, you would agree that your actions in driving toward that direction of Mr. Edgecombe resulted in Mr. Edgecombe hopping a curb to now go onto the sidewalk? Objection, Your Honor, speculation as to what it caused someone else to do. We'll say that again, Mr. Gibner. It's speculation. He's stating that what she did, therefore, she knows what another, why another person got onto the sidewalk. We also know he was going down the stairs anyway, so he could have been just getting off the sidewalk. Right, right, right. Okay. S sustained. I, I, there may be a different question that's allowable, but sustained. Okay. You saw Mr. Edgecombe go into the bike lane, I mean, go into the sidewalk after you turned into the bike lane, correct? Please repeat that. Okay. You saw Mr. Edgecombe proceed into the sidewalk after you went into the bike lane, correct? He went onto the sidewalk and then I pulled over into the bike lane and okay. stopped. Okay. Now, at this point, is this the point where you're saying that Mr. Clement is walking? He gets out the car? He does, yes. Okay. All right, if we could play it at this point. All right, stop it, please. Mr. Clearman is, he's just, he just got done walking, correct? He's walking right now. All right. If we, if we could play it from this point. All right, can you stop right there? <clears throat> Mr. Clearman isn't walking anymore, is he? Well, if I'm going to answer to that from what I recall, what I remember, I was already up, so I didn't see my husband. I was in the car, so I did not see him running okay but based off of what you've just seen right now you see mr clearman walking correct based on what you just what i saw he it looks like he's jogging a little bit picking up his step okay and mr clearman is clearly ahead of your vehicle at this point when he's running right um that is not clear to me right now um this is clearman can you speak up a little please yes sure that's not clear to me at this okay. moment you want to come a little closer to kind of see where Mr. Clement is? Stand up and look if you're comfortable with that, ma'am. Yes, he's in front of my vehicle. So he, he's jogging to a point that was in front of your vehicle, correct? Yes. Okay. And you would have seen Mr. Clearman jog in front of your vehicle at that point, correct? I didn't see him running that, that day, but based on this video, yes, I can see it. Okay. And you were looking at Mr. Edgecombe at this time, is that right? Well, what I recall, was not at this point, no. Okay, so you well, didn't. Can we just counsel, please make a record of either of you exactly where this is stopped since there's a lot of testimony about this? 23 seconds. That's our record. 23 seconds. Can we see the whole, can we see the whole video? Uh, I'll let defense counsel ask questions after that. I'm sure Mr. Gibner will follow up. So I guess the, the question, Ms. Clearman, is do you see Mr. Edgecombe at this point? I can't see him at this point from this video, no. Okay. All right, if we can play just a couple seconds. And we stop right here. All right. You see Mr. Um, Edgecombe at this point. I cannot see him on the video. Okay, you want to come a little closer if you need to? All right, 
I really can't see him. Mm -hmm. I cannot see him on the video. Okay. All right, and Ms. Glamour, you testified that Mr. Edgecombe brandished a weapon at some point. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you also testified on direct that you yelled out to your husband to warn him of the gun, correct? When I saw the gun, I shouted out to my husband, he has a gun. And you also testified to media outlets that when Mr. your husband got too close to Mr. Edgecombe, you yelled out he didn't hear you. Is it, let's, let's strike that. Did you, did you testify earlier that Mr. Clearman did not hear you when you tried to yell out that he has a gun? He did not hear me. Okay, so you did make you did yell out he has a gun. I did. Okay, and you also testified. Well, you also made statements to media outlets saying that he got so close to Mr. Edgecombe that he didn't see it. Correct. I said as he was getting close to him, he didn't see it. Okay, so Mr. Clearman was getting close to Mr. Edgecombe. Correct. He was getting. He was coming up to him to talk to him. Okay. But he was the one that was advancing toward Mr. Edgecombe, correct? Yes. Now I'm going to go into State Exhibit 83. It's the during video. States pulling up that exhibit. Um, the option was available to contact 911 and report that Mr. Adjcom punched her husband, correct? Everything happened so quickly. Okay. M Mr. Mr. Adjcom did not stop you from contacting 911 to report him, correct? He did not stop me? Yeah, it, there was nothing that Mr. Adjcom could do to stop you from calling 911 to report punching your husband, correct? No. Okay. So you made a conscious decision not to call 911 and kind of take matters in your own hands, correct? No. Okay, can you explain? Everything happened so quickly I was stunned. My husband got punched violently in the face. His glasses flew off of him. I'm trying to figure out how to reach down and grab his glasses and think, okay, what do I do now? And at that time, when I'm thinking all this and I'm trying to drive, my husband says, can you turn the corner? I want to talk to him. And so I, I trusted my husband. He was calm. He said, he said it in a very calm voice. And so I, I, I turned. But moments previously, you saw your husband, after being punched, open his door immediately, correct? I did not see that. Well, we, we just went over the video before, prior to lunch, where we showed the video where- But I didn't see that when I was in the car when he okay. got punched. So, we, so if I understand you correctly, you're saying that uh, you, didn't re you didn't know that your husband tried to open the door to maybe proceed after Mr. Adscombe while you were in the car, correct? I did not see that, no. Okay. All right, now we're at 13 minutes and 22 seconds. Now you testified on direct that, you know, your husband didn't chase Mr. Edgecombe, correct? He walked towards him. That's what I saw. And you never used the word chase, correct? You didn't use the word chase, right? Checks? Chase. Chase. Proceed after. Pursue. And, and, and when? Today or when? Any, at any time. Have you ever used the words that Mr. Clearman chased Mr. Edgecombe? I'm not sure. 
Okay. Um, I want to go to 15 minutes and 29 seconds. Just say my husband got out of the car, turned the corner, and chased him. That's what I hear. Her heard. And is that true? As you testify today, is that a true statement? I. A true statement that I said it here? Yes. Is that your recollection that he chased him? Now that you've seen yourself say it immediately after the incident, is that your testimony today? I don't recall it. You just seen yourself say that he, he, he chased him, right? I did, but my memory from that day, I remember him walking. Okay. Okay, a couple last things. Um, now, you spoke before about a red SUV coming up when you approached Mr. Clemens' body um, at the time, correct? It was an SUV with two people, is what you just said was standing at the scene, correct? There was a red truck behind my car and two people had stepped out of the vehicle. Okay, and you, you requested the, the lady to call 911, correct? I shouted out in their direction, please call 911. Okay. Now, Is it true that you were already on the phone with someone at the time that you requested that individual to call 911? I don't recall. I don't. I don't recall being on the phone. Okay. With someone named Ivana. 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 I called her after I couldn't call 911. Okay. All right, and you, you testified before that you didn't call 911 because you didn't remember a six-digit code, correct? I couldn't. I was trembling, and I couldn't get my fingers to I remember the code. I just couldn't do it. Okay. But you were able to put the code in to call Ivana, correct? Afterwards, yes. Okay. I, then, I, oh. I, I, I was able to just calm down a little bit and then was able to, to okay. call her. And what kind of phone did you have, Miss Miss Clearman? It was an iPhone. Okay. And are you aware of a feature on an iPhone that you don't have to put a code in in order to make an emergency call? You know, I no. I mean, I know that there's that the feature, but I never. I, I just that wasn't. I, my reaction was just to do the code. I was. Okay. 
All right. All right, no more further questions for you. Thank you, Ms. Clifford. Thank you, State. Ma'am, I just want to, staying on that phone call portion of it, you indicated once you were able to calm down, you were able to call Ivana. Is that correct? Yes. What got you to calm down? Once I knew someone called 911. Okay. And then defense counsel uh, had previously asked you some questions about uh, stating that, you know, when you went to the body and, and you put your hands on your husband, you realized he was dead. And then they played you this one small snippet where you asked an officer if your husband was okay. Do you remember that questioning from earlier in the morning? I do, I do. Okay, and defense counsel was stating, well, you know, if you asked the officer if your husband was dead or if he was okay, that must have mean that you, you weren't touching or, or knowing that your husband was dead at the time. Um, you stated you were in shock at the time, right? Yes. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to play the portions of that scene, but I'm going to play the entire portion like we did earlier so we can put that in context. Just one moment. Sorry, our equipment sucks. It's in a building in the, built in the 30s. The state keeps saying that, but yes, our equipment in this building is archaic. It's terrible, pathetic, embarrassing. And that's the best I can say about it. For the record, Your Honor, I have uh, State's Exhibit Number 83 currently set up. This is Officer Doring's uh, squad cam, and it shows, and what has already previously been played. Um, just so we're clear, man, we can see you in the back. Is that correct? <coughs> Let me play for you so you can see it a little bit better. Pausing at 3507, do you see yourself? Yes. And you're in the back of the squad by yourself, right? Yes. Okay. Playing from that portion. Thank <laughs> you. 
minutes and 24 seconds. You stated, no one's going to love me like you love me, my love. Is that correct? Yes. Continuing on. That's when we hear you say, he's okay, right? Is that right? Yes. After you had sobbed and exclaimed that no one was ever going to be able to love you like your dead love, your dead husband would ever be able to. Yes. He loved me so much. Man, was this a traumatic experience for you? Very traumatic. Maybe you were hoping for one moment that it was a bad dream, but you knew your husband was dead, right? Overruled. You can answer. Yes, I was. I was hoping this was a bad dream. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe somebody could could do this. And just taking one small portion of what happened in the back of that squad and playing it without the full context leads you to a different conclusion than what actually was going on back there, doesn't it? Overall, that was a question you can answer. We're going to need to use the microphone over there. Right, everybody needs to use the mic. Please. Ma'am, let me just put it to you this way. When someone takes just one second out of all of that anguish and only puts in that one question, that makes it kind of look different than what we just saw, doesn't it? Yes. Ma'am, I'm sorry. Thank you. Nothing else. Nothing further. Anything else? No, Your Honor. All right, you can step down, ma'am. You can step down. You're done. Thank you. Who's the state's next witness? Uh, state calls Detective Kirkvold. Fine. Sergeant Kirk, sorry, he's been promoted. You raise your right hand, Sergeant. So we swear the testimony you've given in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I'll be back. Yes, I do. Tyler Kirkvold, T Y. L E R K I R K V O L D. Thank you. Proceed. Thank you. Now, Sergeant, how are you employed? I'm a sergeant with the City of Milwaukee Police Department. And how long have you been with the Milwaukee Police Department? About 14 years. How long have you been a sergeant? I was promoted to sergeant in September of 2021. And prior to being promoted to sergeant, how were you employed? I was a detective with the city of Milwaukee Police Department for approximately six years. 
What was your assignment back in September of 2020? I was a detective assigned to the Milwaukee Police Department's homicide unit. Who was your partner at the time? Detective Alex Klebundy. Okay. Now, I want to draw your attention specifically uh, to the homicide of Jason Clearman that occurred on September 22nd of 2020. Were you employed as a homicide detective on that day? Yes, I was. Were you involved into in Were you involved in that investigation? Yes. All right. Now, to begin with, were you involved in any way, along with Detective Klebundy, in an attempt to find security video at various different locations? Yes. Okay. Um, and in fact, there were a number of different security videos that were grabbed from various different places along the flight path of this suspect. Am I right? That's correct. At the time, did you have any idea who the suspect was? No. One area that I would like to, to talk to you about is Zanya's Pizza. Are you familiar with that place? Zana's, yes. Zana's. And in terms of that, or in terms of that particular location, was there any video that was recovered from that location? Yes. Were you involved in the recovery of that? Yes. Now, <clears throat> regarding that pizza, or regarding that video, when did you go to get it? That was on September 25th of 2020. Okay. And I'm going to show you what has been marked as State's Exhibit number 52 and place it in the computer here. And as it pulls up, when you went to Zena's or however we pronounce it, the pizza place, um, what were you looking for? I was looking for any video that would potentially capture the incident or the suspect. Okay. Um, just to be very clear, uh, we know that the homicide had occurred kind of around the corner from Brady on, on Holton, is that correct? Correct. We know that the punch happened just off of the pizza place, kind of a little bit to the, uh, to the west, um, and was captured on pole cam, is that right? That's correct. So even though Milwaukee Police Department had the pole camera, and had some video from Casablanca, you still went out to, to this pizza place to see if they had any video? Yes. Okay. Now, when you were looking at the video, Sergeant, um, did you find any video that was of any relevance? Yes, I did. Okay. Now, I want to show you, and I have currently on the big screen, what is labeled channel five. Are you familiar with the location of where we're looking? Yes. Okay. So, as we're looking at this location, what street are we seeing here? That's East Brady Street. Okay, and what are we seeing right here? Uh, that's the front of Zena's Pizza. Okay, and if we go beyond Zena's, uh, what are we seeing? East of Zena's is Casablanca. Okay, and I'm just going to place this on the large screen. So if you are looking down this camera, if we're seeing, we can see the front of in front of Casablanca. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this time hack that we have has it at approximately 7.37 on September 27th. Is that correct? Yes. And is the suspect going to be seen doing anything prior to this incident, about 10 minutes prior to this incident, on this, this video? Yes. What? He's just going to be seen walking eastbound down the sidewalk with his bicycle. Playing from that portion.
pausing at 38 seconds, we can see this suspect bicyclist basically walking with his bike on the north side of the street, going past the pizza place, past Casablanca, and heading further west. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, Sergeant, going forward to approximately Come back just a little bit. To nine minutes and 21 seconds. As we are looking or, or discussing this Zanya's pizza, are we eventually going to see the suspect riding his bike back westbound? Yes. Okay, playing from that portion. We can see what appears to be a truck pulling out, right? Yes. Okay. And pausing at 10 minutes and 45 seconds, we can see the suspect bicyclist now heading westbound. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Now, as we're looking at this, you got a significant period of about 10 minutes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, does the period of 7.45 p.m., would that be reported in this? Yes. Recorded in this, this video camera. Is yes. That right? Did you watch all of this clip? Yes. Did you see anything happening in front of Casablanca at 7.45? No. 7.45 p.m. or 7.45 on the video? 7.45 p.m. on this video. Did you see anything? No, I did not. Okay, so just so we're clear, one of the things we're also looking for is this first incident where the, the clearman swerved around the bicyclist who's on the north side of the street. If that had happened anywhere by Casablanca, that there was some missing video from 745 from Casablanca, this would have also captured it, right? Yes. Was there anything that happened at 745 in front of Casablanca? No. Your Honor, the state would move state's exhibit number 52 in evidence. Any objection? No. Received. Detective. I'm going to try and make this go as quickly as possible here. Were there a number of stills that were created from various different camera angles and security camera angles in an attempt to identify the suspect? I believe so, yes. Okay. Um, there was one from Swing Park, is that right? I don't know if I ever saw that still. Okay. I did see a still from Casablanca video. Okay. 
And when this is happening, you are aware that swing park video, even if maybe there wasn't a still, that it captured um, the suspect after the shooting. Is that correct? Yes. What did it show? One of the camera views at Swing Park depicts the suspect coming from a walkway, which in that walkway is the stairwell where this homicide occurred at. The homicide occurred at the top of the stairwell. The suspect is depicted after the homicide exiting this walkway and coming out onto Water Street, getting on his bicycle and traveling it would be northeast on Water Street on his bicycle. And when you're saying northeast on water, it's going to come back here for one moment to defense exhibit number D5. If we're on Holton and we're on Brady, and the stairs kind of go down towards Water Street, is that correct? Yes. Swing Park would be underneath Holton as it goes over North Water Street? Yes. Okay. As you go down to North Water Street, um, are there businesses or establishments that are kind of further east on North Water? Yes. What are those? There's some taverns located in that area. There's farther northeast. Water off of this camera. Off of the map, Water Street bends to the east and ultimately turns into East Cane Place as it intersects with, I'm sorry, East Cane Place as it intersects with North Humboldt. At that intersection, there is Bel Air Cantina and there's also a tavern called Finks. And Swing Park shows that the biker, kind of at a distance, ends up going uh, towards that location on Water Street. Is that right? Yes. All right. Is this going to be kind of the beginning of NPD's attempts to follow him from security camera to security camera to see if maybe you can see where he goes? Yes. All right. Your Honor, I have placed State's Exhibit number 53 into the computer. It's also warming up. And when you are saying Finks, where is Finks? Finks is located on the southwest corner of the intersection of Kane and Humboldt or water and Humboldt. Okay. So Keene became water, and this kind of is going to be continuing westbound. Is that correct? Correct. Keene starts at the right side of the screen. Water ends at the left side of the screen. Okay. And this is, if we're going to be looking at this, was the time um, portion of the Rat Finks, was it uh, off or was it accurate? It was off. It was slow by 26 minutes, slow approximately. By how many? Approximately 26 minutes, I believe. Okay. So playing from this portion at eight seconds into the video. And pausing at 724. So this is after the homicide, is that correct? Correct. And the bicyclist individual stops for a red light, right? Yes. Okay. Can you see the firearm anywhere on his person at this time? No. Okay. Are you able to get a good picture of his face at this time? No. Playing from 15 seconds. Now, 
pausing at 29 seconds, the bicyclist then did go through the red light, right? Yes. All right, well, no one gave him a ticket for that, did they? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Now, this is Rat Finks. What's across the street from there? Across the street is Bel Air Cantina. Both of these would be establishments, people in them, phones, things like that? Yes. Okay. Our suspect on the bicycle crosses in the red and then kind of just gets in the middle of the street, as we saw. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, the state would move state's exhibit number 53 in the evidence. Any objection? No objection. Fine. Receive. You stated that across the street was Bel Air Cantina. Do I have that right? Yes. Okay. And in terms of Bel Air Cantina, was there also video that was obtained from that place? Yes. Just going back to zero seconds into the recording. As we're seeing here, this shows us September 22nd. Is this camera accurate in terms of time? No. Uh, and how did you determine that this camera was off, uh, Sergeant? We watched the live feed of the video camera and compared the time, the time stamp to the actual time, and we were able to determine that this camera was approximately one hour and 50 minutes slow. So there appears to be a lot of cameras in the city of Milwaukee business establishments that have, have time hacks that are inaccurate. That is correct. Okay. Across the street, what are we looking at here? Finks. Okay. And if we're looking, we can see there's a number of people just kind of out on the street, right? Yes. Okay. Playing from this portion at zero seconds. Pausing at 16, we can again see the same bicyclist suspect stopping for the red light, correct? Yes. Okay. Playing from that portion. And pausing. The suspect disappears from view, is that correct? Yes. Your Honor, the state would move state's exhibit number 51 in evidence. Any objection? No objection. Received. Thank you. Now, Sergeant. That was the portions of the video you guys were looking for and continued on trying to find the suspect. Is that correct? Yes. Um, what was the point of following these these videos down this this line that you could find? There were two goals that we had. One goal was to attempt to get a clear video of the suspect's face in order to help identify him. The second goal goal was to try to figure out where he was going in order to identify him. I'm going to show you what has been marked as state's exhibit number 86 and 87 and 88. You had indicated that you were familiar with stills that were taken from Casablanca as well as Finks and Bel Air Cantina, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Showing you it's been marked as 87. 
does that appear to be at least that one still from the Finks establishment? Yes. Okay. And if we turn it over, where does that appear to be from? That appears to be a still from the Bel Air Cantina. Okay. Showing you what has been marked as State's Exhibit number 86. That's one of the ones from Casablanca on the front page, right? Yes. Okay, and then on the back, what do we see? That is another still. It appears to be from Finks. Okay. And 88, what are we looking at there? This is a still that I believe came from Casablanca. Okay. You can kind of see the Casablanca in there, is that correct? Kind of see what? The Casablanca right there in the photo, right? Yes. Okay. Now, at this moment that you are looking and attempting to follow the suspect, this is all you've got, right? Yes. Were there periods or stretches where you found no video? Yes. You looked for it, you just couldn't find it. Correct. Your Honor, the state would move state's exhibits numbers 86, 87, and 88 in evidence. No objection. Fine, received. No further questions at this time. <clears throat> Cross. Good afternoon. Now, I just want to uh, understand your role in this investigation where it was that you were the lead detective, correct? Detective Klebundi was the lead detective. Okay, you were right underneath Klebundi, is that right? I was his partner at the time. You was his partner? Yes, I was his partner. Okay, so are you second in command or do you both kind of share that responsibility? There's no first or second in command. We work the case together and we work the case as a unit together as well. Okay, so you both share the responsibility as lead detectives, correct? It's generally the person who documents the crime scene who's deemed a lead detective. Okay. So you didn't document the crime scene? Is that your testimony? Detective Klebundi wrote the crime scene report documenting the details of the crime scene. Okay, and when it comes to video evidence, uh, you hold the so did you hold the responsibility of kind of viewing uh, the surveillance and determining what you want to, d to download? From the places that I went to, yes. Okay, so <clears throat> you also uh, would have access to Fusion, right? Yes. And Fusion is a Milwaukee Police Department video poll cam, correct? Yes. Okay. And you went through the evidence that was on the poll cam and decided which parts were relevant for download, correct? No. Okay. And what did you do? I obtained video from... I was working with Detective Alex Klebundi when we both obtained video from Finks and from the Bel Air Cantina and from Zena's Pizza and Lakefront Brewery. Okay, so who downloaded the video from Fusion? Detective Fidel downloaded the poll cam video. Okay, so Detective Fidel would have been able to view all the evidence, all the video that was available, correct? And to, right? He would view everything that was available from the poll cam footage, correct? I don't know what exactly he did and how he did 
his portion of this investigation. I just know that he did obtain a portion of video from the poll cams. Okay, let's, let's take away this situation for a second. I just want to talk generally what is the proper procedure. So generally, when you go to Fusion, you would look at all the video footage and determine what parts are relevant, correct? Yes. Okay. And then you would make, you would have the sole responsibility of deciding what is relevant and what is not so that you could determine what parts you want to download, correct? Correct. So when it came to the video that was produced from the poll cams that would face Brady Street where you captured a punch, right? The punch was captured on the poll cam. Right, and then there was also the incident was captured on poll cam as well, correct? Yes. And you've had an opportunity to review that footage that was captured, that was downloaded by Detective Fidel, correct? Every detective on the unit has the opportunity to review any video that's obtained. Okay, I'm, I'm not interested in other detectives right now. You had the opportunity to, down, to review that footage, correct? Yes. All right. Now, when you looked at the one minute and 34 seconds of video, you did, did you make any other inquiry as to any other video that might be relevant? No. You decided that one minute and 34 seconds was relevant, correct? Yes. All right. Now, do you recall who was the first officer on scene on September 22nd of 2020? I don't know who the first officer on scene was. Okay. If I represented to you that Officer Durham was the first officer on scene, would you have any reason to, to deny that? No, because I know that he was on scene. Okay. Now, the state just asked you questions regarding where the first, about the first incident, right? About the first incident? Well, what about video that was related to Casablanca, correct? Yes. And you testified that from the video footage that you reviewed, you didn't see any uh, incident that occurred on the first, on the video from Casablanca, correct? No. Can you tell the members of the jury, where did the first incident occur? I didn't testify to what I viewed on Casablanca video. I testified to what I viewed on Zena's video. I'm sorry? I didn't testify to what I viewed on Casablanca's video. I testified to what I viewed on Zena's video. Okay, so you didn't, so when you just were up here, when, when the state were asking you about what the video from Casablanca would have shown, you're saying that you didn't view video from Casablanca, correct? Correct. So the 7.45 p.m. video from Casablanca is not what you were referring to when the state was, where it was asking you that question, correct? We were speaking about Zena's video. Okay, so you don't have any, you never seen video at 7.45 from Casablanca, correct? I observed stills from Casablanca, but I, I may have seen the Casablanca video, but I'm not certain. Okay, so you can, Your Honor, just one thing. Zena's Pizza also captures Casablanca. So whatever happened in front of Casablanca was on the Zena's Pizza. Well, That's what we were referring to. Let's clarify. Go ahead. Detective Kirkbold, do you know where the first incident would have occurred at that involved Mr. Edgecombe in the clearance? By first incident, okay. are we talking about the punch? At this point, it's an alleged first incident because he never saw it on video. Right. No, sir. We're not talking about the punch. You are aware that there are allegations in this case that involve a vehicle striking Mr. Edgecombe, pushing him onto another vehicle, with a word being yelled out, what the heck or what the fuck or something to that nature. Are you aware of that allegation of that first incident? Yes. Do you know where that first incident would have occurred? No, I don't. Can you explain to the members of the jury what efforts did you make to find out where the first incident might have occurred at? I know that officers attempted to view video or obtain video from farther east on Brady. As far as my portion of the investigation, I obtained video, the video that we just discussed from the flight path. Now, as the lead detective, you manage other officers, correct? At times. You give them direction, right? At times. You've given Officer During a direction on September 22nd, 2020, correct? 
I'm not certain if I did. Okay. So you don't know what other officer, what efforts other officers might have made to determine where the first incident would have occurred at, correct? I do know that other officers attempted to view video farther east on Brady. Okay. Did you ever take Ms. Clearman to in a, in a car and ask her, can you please show me where the first incident would have occurred at? Did you do that? I did not. Do you know any other officer that did that? No. Now, there are certain duties that officers have when they're the first officer on the scene, correct? Yes. And what are those duties that they have? In an incident like this, check the victim, try to assist the victim, get medical attention for the victim, let other officers that are responding know what their needs are, secure evidence, secure the scene, block traffic, things okay. of that nature. Okay. And when you said secure the scene, what does that mean? That means secure any evidence, secure any witnesses within that immediate area. And is there a such thing called as preserving the scene? Yes. What is preserving the scene? Preserving the scene is essentially the same as securing that area, blocking traffic, restricting foot traffic from that area, putting up tape so citizens know that there's an active investigation and that no evidence or anything like that gets moved or tampered with. Okay. And why do you put up tape? What is the significance of putting tape around a crime scene? To keep people out of that area that don't need to be in that area. And you do that so that you ensure that a crime scene has not been compromised, correct? Yes. And you do that to make sure that evidence cannot be removed from that crime scene, correct? Yes. And you do that to ensure that evidence is not potentially moved from one part place to another place from the crime scene, correct? Yes. And you do that also to ensure that no evidence is also added to the crime scene, correct? Yes. Now, Detective Kirkwell, part of your investigation, did you learn that there were individuals who went to Mr. Clearman's body immediately after he was shot? I don't know when I learned of the fact that an individual went towards uh, Mr. Clearman's body, and we're talking officers or citizens? Whoever. I want to know everyone that you know that went to the body of Mr. Clearman. Pro let's, 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 let's narrow it a little bit. I want to know who went to Mr. Clearman's body prior to law enforcement, medical, MFD, any of those individuals. Who went there that were like citizens? Let's start there. I know for certain that Mrs. Clearman did. Okay. Is there anybody else that you know would have uh, approached Mr. Clearman's body as well? I don't know offhand. Did you make any inquiries as to who else might have went to the body of Mr. There, Clearman? There are if, if he's never heard anything, why would he ask about it? Why would he unless there's more foundation. Mr. Detective, Culver, are you aware that there's been testimony in this case that Rotrell Cameron was at the body of Ms. Uh, Mr. Clearman? I'm not aware of any other testimony in this case. Okay. Did you see Rotrell Cameron on September 22nd of 2020? I don't know if I've ever seen that individual. Or do you know if any other officers would have gotten statements from Mr. Cameron about what he's seen or witnessed on September 22nd? Sustained without more foundation. Detective Carbo, are you aware that Stephanie Trotter was the SU was in a red SUV? That he, he may be aware if someone was in an SUV overruled, you can answer if you know. I don't know that name of being in a red SUV, but I do recall a red SUV in the vicinity from cameras. Okay. And do you ever recall Stephanie Trotter making any type of statements in this case? Judge, Your Honor. 
her state they want her statement call her this is hearsay i agree that it's hearsay they want her to testify she can testify at some other point in time detective kirkbo are you did you make any inquiry as into who was the owner of the red SUV that we see in a one minute and 34 second part of the video? Uh, overruled, it may be relevant. You can answer, Detective. No, I did not. Do you think it would be important to find out who that person is pulling up to the scene at one minute and 34 seconds of that video? Yes. But you did not make that inquiry, correct? Correct. Now, at some point during the initial investigation on September 22nd, do you recall Officer Durring coming to you and advising you that there had been an item removed from the crime scene? The only item that I'm aware of was removed was a wallet. And once you learned that an item that you refer to now as the wallet, didn't you state that's a problem? I don't know what I stated to him, but I can see how it could be a problem. Can you explain to the members of the jury how that could be a problem? If that wallet was on the person of the victim, at that early point in time in the investigation, we didn't have details about exactly what happened. If we learned that some individual removed something from the victim or touched the victim in a certain way, we needed to be able to articulate how this happened, why this happened, who did it, and where that item is now. Now, Detective Kirkville, did you make any inquiry as to why there was a wallet removed from the scene on September 22nd, 2020? I don't believe I did. Now, Detective Kirkville, as we talk about compromising a crime scene, now, you can confirm your knowledge of a wallet being removed, correct? Yes. But you don't know if there was other items, like a weapon, that could have also been removed from that crime scene, correct? Correct. You don't know if other item had been moved from one place and put in another place. Objection, Your Honor, there is absolutely no evidence that anything was moved. That's right, there's no evidence of that. Don't imply something, counsel, that there is no evidence of, none. There's been no evidence introduced in this case by any witness that is even close to that. That assumes facts not in evidence. Sustained. Move on to a relevant question. Like to Don't back. imply things that have not occurred and are not in evidence. Move on. I'd like to now go to State 83, please, the during video. <clears throat>
I'm going to start here at about, um, we've got about 45 minutes and 15 seconds. That should be fun. Council, you've got 45 minutes and 15 seconds. This is fine. We can, we can play from here. Just throwing everything. And then uh, I have this wallet. Do you want his wallet right away? Uh, uh, or I'll give it to the guy that is in the scene. Just to the time. Uh, you get it back. Stop it right there, please. Now, I just want to, before we proceed, uh, Detective Kirkwood, is that you? No. This is this is not you? I, I'm sorry, are you? There's, there's two people standing here. Did the, the subject wearing a suit coat is me. The subject not wearing a suit coat is Detective Kilbundi. But Okay. All right, can we start from there? Yeah, because that's actually more so like over here. Kind of, yeah, yeah. The detective that took his wife to interview wanted me to give one of you his wallet. Um, he said, let's yes. just set that on, the, on his car for right now. Uh, Are there people out of here? I don't know where the wallet came from. Okay. I was, I was interviewing right her to get a... Were you just advised that... Did you, did you just observe where Officer During says, did that wallet come up out of him? Correct? Did the wallet work? Come up out of him. I think that was Detective Klobundi. Okay, you, that. you were present for that, sir? Yes. All right. And he said, that's a problem, or that's not good? I believe that's what I heard. Okay. Can we go back five seconds, please? I believe so. Okay. And why did you say incredible at this point? Because I was being given an item that we just learned came from the victim, and there was no account from where it came from. Okay. And that's a problem when items come up come up out of big, um, out of victims, correct? Correct. Sure. All right. Can you now at this point let's 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 play from here. Me. We, we you have, didn't take it. No. Out. So we 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 came. We were coming westbound on, on Brady. Flipped to you. We've got a couple of people that were going to do right now. No, I'm kidding. They, they took my with the other cops. I got where's where well, well, yeah, I got you. Sure, just so we know. Yep. Thank you. Can you stop it right here, please? So, Officer During is given a direction at this point to find out where this wallet came from. Correct. Yes, by Detective Klobundi. And that's an important issue in this case, right? Yes. Can you continue playing the video, please? Detective Lawn, where it came from, I didn't get it. We were first ones here. 
Who went down his wife? Did MFT talk? No, his wife did. His wife? Did? Yeah. Oh, okay. She got it right. Okay. Wait, dude, it's either MFD or his wife. Those are the only right, let, me, let me go ask MFD. Can I stop right there, please? So at some point in time, there's evidence that have come, come about the victim that the detectives in the police department don't know where it came from at some point, correct? Yes. And that could be problematic, too, correct? It depends on the situation. Well, in this situation, that could be problematic, correct? It has the potential to be problematic, yes. You can take your plan. Hey, sir, do you, do you, did any of your guys pull the victim's wallet out of his pocket? Or, or have his wallet by any chance or see his wallet? No, you don't know. Thank you. I don't pull anyone in here. Can I ask Okay, fabulous. Hey, did any, did any of you guys see his, we have his wallet, did any of you guys see it or did you remove it from his pocket to get his ID or anything like that? No one? Okay, good. No, we didn't search for How did you get it? Uh, one of the officers. Okay, okay. probably so no, You know what, none of you guys got it, then his wife must have got it. Yeah, we, his did, wife. we didn't reach for ID or anything. All right, cool. So his wife must have gave it to someone because okay. um, my partner got it and he either said it was the wife or MFD they gave it to him and none of the MFD guys said they gave it to his wife so must have had it. Your partner is the first cop that ended up having it? Yes. Okay. And that's Rick Mo And just to confirm you 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 stated you don't there was no follow up as to why that took place, correct? By me, no. And you're not aware of any other officer that followed up on that issue, correct? I don't know. And you know that you, you've learned that there was other individuals, even outside of Ms. Clearman, that was present at the body at some point or another, correct? I don't know how present they were, how close they got to the body. I, I don't know. Did you ask those questions to any of those individuals? I wasn't the detective that was conducting the interviews of those individuals. Did you follow up with any officers who were conducting those interviews? Directly, I don't remember doing that, but we do have briefings where we share information. Okay. Do you remember that information being shared in one of those briefings? I don't remember. Showing you what has been marked as defense exhibit number one. Do you recognize that? I believe so. What do you recognize that to be? This appears to be um, uh, the top of a stairwell, and it looks like the same stairwell where this incident happened. Okay. Isn't that a fair and accurate representation of that stairwell? I don't know because I don't know where this photograph came from. I don't know who took this photograph, and I can't be 100% certain that this is the stairwell. Okay. Now, you spent some time at the stairwell where this incident, you know, finally ended at, correct? Yes. How much time did you spend at that stairwell? I don't know how long I was on scene there. Okay. Did you go back any other days outside of September 22nd? I believe I did. But you're not for certain. I'm not certain what days I went back, but I know I've been back to that stairwell and that alley, that walking path at the base of the stairwell, likely on the 20. Fifth, when I was attempting to get video from the area. Okay. And when you arrive, when you perform investigations as the lead detective, it is important to consider all alternatives, correct? Yes. So it's important not to be biased when conducting an investigation, correct? Correct. It's important not to jump to conclusions, correct? Correct.
Was there anyone searched that you are aware of who would have been present at the Mr. Clement's body at any point on September 22nd, 2020? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part. Was of the there question. any searches conducted of anyone's person who got close to Mr. Clement's body? Not that I know of. Yeah. No further questions. Thank you. They, you didn't search MFD? No. I mean, they were close to his body, weren't they? Yes. Okay. Also, um, additionally, defense counsel was asking you about, oh, you found out about the wallet, and this is when an officer goes, hey, we got the victim's wallet. You say, where did it come from? He didn't really know, did he? Correct. That, that's a problem that the victim's wallet, we don't know how it gets to an office, right? Yes. Okay. But if we look at the exact same body cam, they didn't play this. I'm going to play it. Six minutes, and let's go to two seconds. When we first encounter the victim's wife, let's play from that portion. Okay, six. Okay, Pam, Pam, let me get, let me get his ID. Can you keep it? Yeah, come on, let's walk her. Okay, so Officer Dory, who didn't remember that he and his partner had gotten it from the wife, we can see get it from his wife. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, there was a lot going on, right? Yes. Even officers can get caught up in the adrenaline and the emotion. That's correct. Okay, so even though in this same video where we see Officer Dory get the wallet from the wife and say, give me his ID, 40 minutes later, he doesn't remember where the wallet came. Correct. Okay, that's one of the great reasons about having the body cam is that problem was answered in the MPD body cam itself. Mystery solved, right? Yes. Okay. Now, anyways, thank you. Thanks. Detective Kirkwell, under any circumstance, no one should ever take an item from a crime scene, correct? That's not correct. Okay, give me a give me a circumstance where it's where it's okay for an individual who's a citizen to take an item away from a crime scene. As a citizen, no. Okay, it's not acceptable. And Ms. Clearman was a citizen, correct? Correct. Now, you've also learned that there was a knife in Mr. Clearman's pocket, correct? Yes. Okay. And you don't know who all touched that knife, correct? I know that it was found in his pocket and it was removed by the medical examiner. Okay. You don't know who all touched that knife on September 22nd, 2020, do you? Only from my point being there and the medical, medical examiner removing it, I don't know if anybody else went in his pocket prior to that. So it's possible that somebody else other than Jason Clearman could have also touched that knife, correct? Yes. And in fact, there was no DNA taken of that knife, correct? I don't know that. No more questions. Defense counsel said it's possible that someone else other than Mr. The, other than the ME touched the knife. Do you have any evidence whatsoever that you're aware of that anybody before the medical examiner went into Mr. Clearman's pockets? Only the fact that Mrs. Clearman had his wallet other than that, no. Now, the wallet coming from the back pocket, is that correct? I don't know where the wallet was removed from. Are you aware of how Mr. Clearman was situated prior to the officers arriving on the scene? Yes. How was it? Face down. On the stairs, is that correct? At the top of the stairs. 250 pound man, correct? I don't know his weight, but I would imagine so roughly. In order for someone to get into his pockets, someone would have to move him, probably pick him up, and get a hand into that pocket in order to either put something or remove something. Is that correct? Cause of speculation. No, it doesn't. All rule. Yes. Okay. Additionally, no officer allowed Ms. Clearman to take the wallet, did they? No. But a distraught wife went to his body and took his wallet before the cops even got there. Right? Yes. No more questions, Paul. All right, you can step down.
You done? Yes, I'm good. I'm good. You can step down, Detective. Who's the state's next witness? Uh, what's the situation with the witness that may be called out of order? Well, we still got time for so I'd like to use my time if I can. <clears throat> Who's next? I don't know yet. Hold on. going in the hallway uh, if you take a short break you guys can be honest yes no maybe okay when he comes back we'll take a break come in we're going to take a five or ten minute break for the jury so you can stretch your legs all right, ladies and gentlemen, leave your notepads where they are. Follow my bailiff out. I'm not going to insult your collective intelligence by telling you the rules for the 795th time. So, see you in a few minutes. Out off the record, five or ten minute recess.